YouTube. We have everyone in. I don't see it on YouTube, your YouTube yet. Yeah, it should be on now, Andrew. One sec. Um, Claire, would you mind just uh, muting for a while, please, and turning off your video? It's on. Yeah, it's definitely on. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see it on my it's side now, Andrew. Yeah, it's on. If you re go back and refresh, it might, it might pop up, Andrew. I did already. Uh, yeah, can you just double check, Laura, on yeah. the YouTube? It's on live on mine. Okay, Sean says he can see it. Yes. And it's on. It's weird, I can't see it. Yeah, sir, we're live. Okay, we are live, live, live. Yeah. Live. Okay, here we go. Dragon live. Okay, welcome, everybody. We are Two Feathers Medicine, and we have with us, of course, Andrew Bartzis, the Galactic Historian, as we delve into the subject of dragons. And what we want everybody to uh, appreciate before we get started is that any of these mythical versions of dragons that we have are not authentic. And when we start to deal with dragons, it's a very powerful energy, and we have to come with a level of respect when we deal with dragons. Otherwise, the powers can get extremely overwhelming. So... We'll uh, bring Andrew in here now and, and see in which direction he wants to take us. The direction that is to the dragons. Hmm. On the map, there is this edge of the map that says, here be dragons. That is where we're going today. Steer the ship north to the edge of the map. <laughs> Kill all the flat earthers as we go. <laughs> here be dragons. <laughs> <laughs> So they are the original consciousness explorers, are they? The dragons? No. Okay. I'm screwing with you. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? You have an experience with them. It's not like, you know, you're brand new nilly willy with them. No. Never kissed a dragon before. Oh, I don't kiss and tell. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> well, like yeah, that's, a hot, that's a hot subject there, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dragons who say, I don't know, she's a talker. <laughs> <laughs> what are dragons? Dragons are spawned from the celestial mind of, I don't know whether it's all planets, but planets that have a celestial mind are able to spawn dragons. Yes. Yes. So Keep going. dragons don't lose their source connection like we do. They are always source connected. But I do understand that they can get lost like we can in void time. No, they can get source picky. There's more than one source. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and they can get caught in our um our harvesting system the babylonian harvesting system and they have been caught and are still caught are they in the harvesting system they work for for the system uh, not uh, not necessarily out of choice what do you think i think they do have choice okay. i think dragons ha don't lose their free will <coughs> They? they can confuse it, they don't lose it. They don't lose their free will, and they have a different view of free will than we do. Look how much you know about dragons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I listened to a few shows this afternoon. Just a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so why aren't they the first... Because that's part of their job, is to consciousness explore and create change and be our um not our guides but our equal co-creators as matty and said. guides and guides and guides so are they, they are consciousness explorers too though and are a system they? of commerce mm. a system of commerce uh-huh keep going you guys know everything. Come on, spit it out. <laughs> well, a celestial system of commerce that can transport souls from one place in the universe to another place in the universe or across the universes throughout all the yeah. galaxies. 
So when the angel's tit is full and you can't go between galaxies because the angel's tits can't have anybody else sucking on it, you can take a dragon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and then, on the you laugh now, wait until you see that angel titty. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter, man or woman. That's a good looking titty. <laughs> <laughs> It'll bring me to the bosom of life. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> so when you when you say it, Andrew, there are so they're a lot like the the, the angelic. Then they're obviously different, but a lot like they have a lot of roles similar to the angelic realm. They have yes, they have very similar roles. Exactly, yes, yes. And they don't need an I am presence as we do. What about when they manifest? No, no, no. They, they don't use I am presence the way we no. do. No. Okay. They don't use it. But when they because come in they as a DNA. Their perception, their perception of free will is radically different than ours. And you must always take that into account. Their view of perception of free will is radically different because they were not born as DNA skin suits, skin suits of debt exchange, which is what we were born as in the real definition of who we are, what we are, where we're at in this time before we go through an awakening. We're just debt instrument vehicles. So would the dragons have the debt instrument, dragons are not debt instrument vehicles to begin with. Therefore, they're out there. They're again, their complete and total perception of life will be radically different than all of ours. So the, uh, you'd say they're very balancing for the land and the energies of the land able to do that. It's just. Say that again. I had a, I had a switch devices. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, so you'd say, did the dragons work on the land a lot then? The ancestral balancing and stuff like that. Do they have a part to play in that? Yeah. So, you know, to, to throw a rings of power um, dig in here, it's not like <laughs> there were harfits going around like hobos <laughs> filling up the land. <laughs> Okay, with crappy Irish accents. <laughs> they were integral at creating the foundations of realities. The shapes of the mountains and the in the styles of the coasts and the of the of the oceans. So they had a very much an influential aspect on the creation of the continental process. Okay, they would often seed themselves in different areas. Because they would be like seeding, you know, crystalline consciousness within areas when they're in the planetary formation phase. So that's but they're the still prepare. They're, they're still preparing it for life. That's the and that's why they can be that that the elemental side where they right. can be seen as, you know, galactic farmers, tilling the soil to attract life to come to it. And creating gold. Yeah, the gold is usually like their feces, and diamonds. It's their excre excrement. And then that raises the frequency of the land around them. Because they're huge, aren't they? The elemental dragons can be huge. Not always. Some Probably of them are micro, micro okay. communities and some are macro communities. Yeah. Okay. Like some so, of the wind dragons are macro communities because they're, they're wind. Yeah. They're shapeless and formless, yet they shape and form when they make a, you know, a huge pattern of wind. So Does, Dave Farrow's asked, what motivation do they have in creation? Like a motivation we do what, what's what's my purpose in doing it <laughs> and dragons don't just do they don't all do the same things they each have different tasks you know i've been exposed to dragons just not not much but what i've seen from them is the ability to take beings from one reality to another that's that's what i've seen and the yeah. ability to travel through time and space effortlessly that's what i've seen with my own eyes so be it yeah, but I'm so sure many, many different expressions. Yeah, many many dragons are born into a duty. That doesn't mm. mean they will continue with that duty. Mm. Oftentimes they get bored with that duty and take up somebody else. And sometimes they trade duties with other things and places. You're going, hey, this is much more fun than you know, crapping out diamonds in the mountain for a thousand years. <laughs> okay. Versus dealing with humans. I'd rather go deal with the subhumans or the inhumans. Someone in the chat is saying, are dragons whales yeah. in the Union of Communication Creation Alleys? Yes, they are. So do they, because they, do they weave the fabric of creation for horse and spider? 
more like supply the thread. Supply the thread, okay. The thread yeah. merchants. Thread merchants, yes. <laughs> And so does a does a dragon's breath have any teachings within it, and how dragons breathe? <laughs> yes, because I, I asked no. my dragon that earlier, and I was like, "What that question could I ask?" Actually, it's like to ask about <laughs> dragon breath. <laughs> 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 let's, let's take the human the human aspect out of a breath. Okay. Say a breath for a dragon can be breathing in air in such a way that it's polarized to release plasma energy inside the lungs. So a dragon's lungs doesn't function the way ours do. It's not just about oxygen. It's about extraction of energy. So their hemoglobin is energy. Their blood is energy. It's what allows them to create the breath of fire, electricity, or whatever it is that they come out. It's a master transmutation process. So dragons are transmuters, transformers, and tricksters, oftentimes. They will trick an energy from go to one to another. It's why their digestive system can create diamonds on the other side. Okay, they're transmogrifiers. So they, they can eat one material and leave another material, which can be a mystery for another group of people because it's the trickster aspect there. So depending on what they are consuming and what they're doing, the breath can be an infinitude amount of things. It could also be words, just words, songs. Do they do this interplanetarily? Is that a word? Yes. Between yes. planets. Okay. Intersolar system, yeah. Inter uh, yeah, okay. So as a, say, energy body when um because i remember on my reading um one of my first readings with you where lady picked up um a, a dragon i was working with who i've met i think 500 years ago in china or something i made like a blood oath with a dragon and i remember you explaining that it was what's it what's it is it like a space vehicle then for a lot of people the dragon to be able to be protected and go into experiencing and new void well, spaces the vast, or... vast form of consciousness will see dragons not as the first time they will have experienced them as like a taxi service personal uber service <laughs> greyhound bus service uh or first class flight place to place to place so one of the main things so dragons as they're looking to upgrade their experience they become galactic travelers and will offer taxi services from point a to point b because they learn something from each person that's taxied back and forth. Plus, they get regular communication with other celestial consciousness. And they get what's going on. They get the galactic motivations of what's going on. And oftentimes, in a metaphor, they'll create a dragon news network. More like, you know, the grapevine of what all the different dragons are hearing going on. And then they'll put on their, their version of, you know, those Entertainment Tonight shows. <laughs> what's going on in dragon celestial history you know <laughs> and i guess that's why it's here be dragons because they are the ones exploring beyond right and that's why we've got to run over all the flat earthers on the way <laughs> <laughs> drive them off the edge of the earth and that's it <laughs> There's a great funny picture I saw with all the flat Earth of all the planets in this galaxy. Then Earth was just flat. <laughs> all of them were out, but just Earth was flat. <laughs> so th this this could connect to about our awareness and understanding of them, Andrew, and uh, how we communicate to them. And this connects to when I had, uh, which I've spoke to you about, we spoke about on a different show. Um, I had my first connection with my dragon, and it was. Basically, I felt really dumb and uh, it basically played a trick and like laughed at me for asking the question. Uh, so let, we could go into that and, and our perceptions of how to speak to them and, and what responsibility do we need, Andrew, to speak to these dragons? Right. I've already been doing that 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 dragon irony thing with Laura a little bit. <laughs> she knows all this stuff. OK. And she's got to shine. She's got to got to rack her dragon's tail. <laughs> So we could open it up to the audience through questions, through the chat room, anything you want. 
I will note dumb questions, not as dumb, but in the <laughs> response, one might discover the nature of the response. They are tricksters, okay, but not necessarily tricksters like gremlins or any other things. Their goal is to trick you into higher consciousness. Oh, hold on. We've got two, two questions here from Anne Larson. So what kind of connection can we have with them? I sense a huge muscular being, green, and connected to a fire or volcano, a deep rumble, like inside the earth is confirming. Yeah, that's the beginning of an attunement to a dragon type, that type of energy. It's saying something is being birthed. And can you go through the seismic changes and grow with it? Watch it come out of the mountain, or is it inside of you and affecting the lands around you? Or is it whispering into you to just pay attention to the moments of the astral world as it's trying to create a creation within your reality? Will you notice it? And then what will you do with it when the responsibility comes? Okay, from uh, Dave F, what, oh, it's gone, come back. Ooh, what are dragon, what's dragon's interest in the galactic ascension machine as um, participants? The same that ours is, to end, to end the time travel wars. Because clearly they must exactly. have been involved in it as well, because if they're here Absolutely. And trapped yeah. in human DNA skin suits, they're involved in the drama. Exactly. And then there are ones that are trapped in negatively too. Mm. By the system. Through their yes. own karma. Uh, sometimes it's more collective karma than individual karma. And then there are quite a few dragons who made splashes in history who shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. okay? And fall to the false god energy. That's common. Any of the, the high level beings didn't want to come in as a false god, but got worshipped as one because mm. they saved everybody from certain death. And you're not going to stop adultery, uh, uh, I iconic, not iconoclism, um, adultery, mm -hmm. not adultery, where you're they're, they're seeing people as idols and the, the greater than the greats. And I bet they get that all the time with people communicating to them, giving the full power away and seeing them as that kind of god complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. See, so everybody wants to energy. come on. No, 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 no yeah. jokey dragon energy, energy so far. No, we got some good questions though, because Sean Bibby's in. How come if you put a dragon in an infinity drive with in infinite space, it fucks up the universe? <laughs> <laughs> why? Well, there's many reasons why. Maybe <laughs> the dragon doesn't have a celestial driver's license. <laughs> okay. <laughs> B, said dragon, probably has 10 points on his insurance and has had other licenses removed <laughs> from him or her. And ultimately, a dragon is not a celestial body. But there are many dragons, just like who we want to ride on the back of a dragon, want to ride on the back of a celestial world. They want to be a rider, too. So why haven't they got a celestial driving license if they're spawned from the celestial mind? Because they're not celestial beings. They're dragons. Oh, they're... Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Ah. So it's the dragon driving They're spawned license, from not... celestial. So yeah. They're more like the term, instead of God, deity, half God, half celestial, half, half not. Would you, give your ten -year, would you give your 10-year-old kid the rights to drive the planet? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm terribly um, distilling it down at some of the basics here, but mm. yeah, the planet's not going to give their dragon the right to go out and take it on a donut tour and, you know, <laughs> make it do spin outs and burnouts because that's what the dragon will do. <laughs> hmm. You imagine a planet coming into your solar system doing a bunch of donuts and, and burnouts and leaving <laughs> celestial smoke everywhere. Bad dragon. So and you it... get a bunch of dragons driving planets like a motorcycle gang. <laughs> <laughs> you know that would happen, right? Come on. <laughs> then dumping it and nicking the tires. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Do dragons have ego? Yes, they do. 
Yes, they do. do yeah. Ego is one of those things that scales up into the other dimensions. It's just perceived differently. <laughs> How is their ego different to ours then? It's like comparing elephants to screwdrivers. Oh, okay. Not it's possible. that different. It's yeah. it's impossible to describe. Have, have dragons ever been celestial minds themselves? Yes, there have been many dragons who have moved on to become celestial minds. Yes, but they're no longer dragons at that point. They're celestial. Minds. They've grown up. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> grown up. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you can ask your baby dragon what do you want to be when you grow up when you grow up what, yeah. what would so they another... say what would be the ultimate oh it's infinite amount of things yeah. I mean if you're yeah. looking at an earth dragon versus another dragon they're all going to be like freedom from what from freedom from freedom <laughs> <laughs> it may seem like an oxymoron but freedom from freedom what does that really mean they want to experience something they want to be limited into an experience so they can learn yeah. something new. Yes. Something untold of. Mm. Brand new to the edges of the universal mind. That's what they do, isn't it? They're, ah, that's they what they want. That's, that's where they get their change. rocks off. Right. Yeah, that's what does it for them. Change, exploration. Yeah, being on the edge of complete and total unknowingness. What's next? What's around that corner? No one's ever been there. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I know what that's like. <laughs> so is, is there any planets just specifically for a dragon experience for dragons to go to and kind of like a theme park? Like a dragon Disneyland? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's quite a few dragon Disneylands, but oftentimes there are other living beings on the planet too. And the dragons go there to go into smaller forms or break up into 40 or 50 forms and go to their red light districts. <laughs> so they love procreation and the different styles of procreation. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So a dragon's easily bored. We ought to have a few jokes, you know, how do you bore a dragon? Oh, no, 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 they're not <laughs> easily bored. They're, 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 because it's their attention is not occupied by one subject matter. So oftentimes it's occupied by a hundred or a thousand subject matters. It's when one subject matter becomes addictive to them, okay? And then they keep going after that same subject matter, same subject matter, which will then dilute some of their, their energies, which will create a boredom because when you're doing the same thing over and over again, it eventually loses some of its luster. So what would be a typical dragon addiction? Sex. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, to the point where, pff, whatever, one one phallus, one hole. Why can't we, I want to go eight. <laughs> Are they faithful yeah. then, dragons? Do they only stick to one partner? No, monogamy is a human a human religious thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. though there are animals that are totally monogamous. Okay, is the human DNA lineage meant to be monogamous? No. no. Mm -hmm. Are there absolute free wills of true love and monogamy? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in general, humanity is not a monogamous one and done concept because there's so much for humanity experience when it comes to the many potentials that love has for us. But if you do find that one and done love, what are you going to do to make it be memorable up until the day, the last day? So what's a dragon's love life like? Oof. <laughs> Have you <Oof>. the words? <laughs> Oof. What's a dragon's love life? Like physical love life? Or romance? Well, Do they have romance? Yeah, you know? yeah, romance. Do they go out to dinner? Candlelit dinner? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Their version. <laughs> Their version. And they... <laughs> Like every seven, eight hundred human years, they the female dragons have their period, and for them, it's not like a human woman's period. It's it's if you're a dragon, you're out and about. They will pounce on you aggressively, not in an intention to create intercourse, but to dominate you into a 
like a dominatrix energy until several dragons are in a pod under the woman's spell. But that's their that's their version of it. Mm -hmm. And one may be able to seed the chief offspring, but several of the others will have the seed of the others also. So it's really not a hierarchical process unless the dragon female chooses. And there are many times the dragon female chooses not to give birth, or they only give birth maybe every 3,000, 4,000 years with a lifespan of between 10 and 30,000 years. And there are many dragons who never give birth. And, and what's dragon's birth like then? As an experience? Uh, kind of like the alien coming out of a chest. <laughs> <laughs> coming out of an egg. <laughs> how, how long are they in the egg process for? Um, oh, hun before? hundreds of hundreds of years. So Sometimes Game of Thrones is, is got thousands. Of, yeah, bit, Sometimes bit thousands. Long. Because the egg itself is a time traveling transmutation device. I was going to say that there must be a, a very expansive type of fetus in the womb process. I know we are, it's a different technology, but that similar yes. thing. Sort of similar concept. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. oftentimes dragons will leave an egg on a world, knowing full well that the dragon won't give birth to a few thousand years later, which allows the world to catch up in an astral format. Like it's a low level world with very little life on it. But once that dragon is born in that world, it'll bond with the celestial source and begin to create the fabrics and then train other things how to create fabrics and what to start drawing on the surface of the world. So, it can bond immediately with that celestial mind of that planet. Right. It's not seen the as a... Right. Then the celestial mind will, 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 will create friends and family members for it. Oh. And really and open it, it up of the astral doorways. And so... I mean, dragons are, they're not, are they completely infinite in their adulthood or are they, are they not quite infinite? So what I'm getting at no, is- No, 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 they, the... they have a lifespan. They're not, they're not complete. There are, but there are many dragons who get on the infinity scale and they're not really dragons anymore. They become celestial minds. Right, I get it. And so when a, when a dragon is in an egg, is it infinite the same as our, the way our fetus is? So it's dreaming with the celestial mind at that point, even in the egg. Yes, we can make that metaphor and association, but it is still on a much more grander scale. Mm. Meaning their fetus in the egg time is looking 300,000 years into the future from its first birth. Mm. So it's going to be affecting many cycles of life. Very, very have deep impact on many cycles of life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why dragons view free will completely different than us mm. because of the nature of their egg time. And what, what's a dragon blood? Like, yeah, that's what I was, Amy, great. Um, dragon's blood then, what's that like as technology? And is it like different colors? Have you ever, had, ever, have you ever had McDonald's high C orange drink? Uh, I probably have back in the day. I probably have at yeah. some point. I used to go as a kid all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like. Uh. Kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. The dragon's are like, who the fuck wants to drink my blood? Any <laughs> goddamn blood magicians down there? Like, Why do you need to know about my blood? <laughs> and, and, and this connects to as well. Um, do humans make blood oaths with dragons? Yes, they do. And what is do the that dragons process? care? Yeah. Do the dragons care? No. What? Unless they go, whoa, why? this dumb, this dumbass human did a dragon a blood oath to me. Okay, what can I make him do? <laughs> Look at that shit. He's on a crusade. <laughs> Fuck, he's fucking the world up. God damn it. You have fucking blood oaths. <laughs> <laughs> you do a couple of questions from the chat. I'm trying to catch sure. up. Right. From blood Sam. oaths are not hold on, hold on. Okay. Blood oaths are not ever a good thing. Okay. Okay. That that shit came out during an awful evil time of humanity. And there's so many people. I'm making a blood oath to change this world. Oh God, you just failed at changing the world. It's blood oath that got us in this trouble. <laughs> uh, I'm guilty of that in a past life. <laughs> Me too. We all are. We all are, right? <laughs> 
Okay, from Sandy. Are the seraphims serpentine dragons of the golden age? Of the golden age. Hmm. What does golden age mean in that definition? She probably goes, light worker bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. Okay. okay. We just must be careful in understanding when one says the golden age, whose golden age? Because one golden. man's golden age is not another man's golden age. One man's golden age is an apocalypse to the other. Mm -hmm. The dream time awakening might be a, a good thing. Yes. Yeah. So, is I like there, this. Go on. Go somebody on. wants to know, how does Andrew all know all of these? <laughs> somebody let him know. <laughs> he's got a book. He's got a book behind him. He keeps going off and looking at the book. <laughs> he's got the dragon Wikipedia, hasn't he? <laughs> Right. Saint Germain's behind him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those old, good old Germanies back there too. So, so good, good one, Dave. Dragons of Elkin Noir, great dragons of peace? Question mark. Oh yes, yes. I struggled to put that into the Dragon Revocation or not, the actual mm. name of those dragons, mm. but I did in the end, and it and it has attracted many people to a Sky Realm where the dragons often take humans as bonded riders and go on missions to many places. Mm -hmm. And it was the right thing for me to do, include it in there. So it's Catherine, like dragon riding camp. Yeah. Catherine, do dragons participate in our TV film entertainment worlds since they have their own media to guide support soft disclosure? Yes. Uh, Bruce Lee would be an example of a dragon that was on TV. Mm -hmm. Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Prince. There are many people who have full-on dragons inside of them, and they become mega superstars for some reason. Because they're trying to influence through the media, through their great DNA charisma. A recognition that is not that that is more than a human being inside that body. Did you say there's something like 145 dragon lineages in human DNA skin suits? Yeah, around 140 to 170, yeah. Wow. Um, of the 9,000, of the 980,000 human, of the 980,000 human lineages. Hmm. So w what do dragons do to like recover, you know, like a rejuvenation? If they need to go into rejuvenation or recovery, they go and have spa days, <laughs> self heal, self nurture. <laughs> yeah. So what? the real question is, how do they self heal and self nurture? Yes, yeah. yes. They find a they find a place that is asking, create with me, create with me something beautiful, and let's tap into our core geniuses together. That's how they regenerate and rejuvenate. Do they okay. have to rejuvenate from being in a human skin suit? Yes. Human skin suits can be very um, destructive is the wrong word. Taxing? Uh, no, let me, let me figure out the right word. It's like when you eat too much ice cream and you get brain freeze. Mm. It can be like that for them for long periods of time where it was centuries of brain freeze. And then they have to heal from being in the brain freeze because their brain's being limited because it's too much time in the limited human mind. Have you ever tried to force yourself to operate during brain freeze? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As part of you guys training and learning how to be hosts, I will teach you how to have two chat rooms open at once while eating ice cream and getting brain freeze so that you can still hit the and tell everyone, hit the like and subscribe button, please. Can't wait. <laughs> because everyone here must learn shameless self-promotion. Okay. Hi, Amy. If you, can, if you can spit out the like and subscribe, please, with brain freeze, you have passed Andrew's <laughs> class on how to be a host. <laughs> or, or you could just get a t-shirt couldn't you <laughs> or you could just have a little button that pops up on the screen like and subscribe yeah, a t-shirt where it lights up yeah. with a yeah. dragon at the bottom <laughs> right 
Right, from Amy, our volcano's dragon farts. We were talking about dragon farts earlier before the show. So there are many dragon volcanoes that have dragon flatulation as a process to them, yes. Ah. And then there are others where there's dra dragon orgasmic sex. Do dragons have a penis? Not all of them have things that we would call a phallus. Yeah. Some of them have this etheric tree branch <laughs> <laughs> yeah. leading to that galactic sex shop <laughs> well i mean it's a branch it's like an etheric branch with all these things coming off of it and that's how they connect to the other side what is it um what was that movie um the one with all the blue people and they got their hair connects to the animals avatar, avatar yeah avatar well it's kind of like that's what their phallus is like except it's pure energy and then there are other dragons that it's very phallic like. And then there are other ones that couldn't tell if it was a phallus or a, you know, or a rock. Does it, you know? does it depend on the lineage or because they can be shapeless and formless, they can form their own? Yes. And it also depends on the recipient who can be shaped and formed in any way that they want. They may create how the phallus and the vagina interact. Or part of the journey is to figure out how it, to make it interact. So you mean the receiving, let's say the female. The male has got to crack the code. The male has to crack the code to the female. And okay. the female is actively trying to create new code so the male can't crack it. Until mm -hmm. such a time yes. they've, they've aligned. <laughs> Dragon foreplay. Yes. <laughs> Don't bring that tree near me. <laughs> <laughs> There are others that like bring on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Too hard. <laughs> okay, from from Claire, can we ask their help to transmute? Sure, but they may not help though. It's a, what is what is the intent behind the help? Is it a selfish help? Is it a is it a martyred help? It is a real help, and if if they help. What ultimately are you going to do to create a greater change within yourself? It's not tit for tat. They want to they want to watch people grow. And if you constantly ask for help and ask for help and never do anything with it, how should they respond? And I suppose you have to, well, I know you have to make a relationship with your dragon too. You have right. to build that um, equal co-creation relationship. Right. You got to grow that equal co-creation relationship, grow it in such a way that there's a clear process of growth between the two of you. Yeah, yeah. Work with them, Sean. Uh, so I often think of dragons like eastern demons that can shape shift into human forms. Can they do that outside of this reality? So what's the question? Um, dragons. Uh, he thinks of dragons like Eastern demons that can shape shift into human forms. Can they do that outside of this reality? Yes, but take the why. Why do they need the word demon there? Yeah, he's put that in inverted commas. Okay. Okay. So take the word demon out. Yes, they can transmute and transform into just about anything they want, and they can be anything they want wherever they are. If they need to be a human. Where a place no one's ever seen a human, they'll be that as shape as complete and total shapeshifters. They have complete control over their form, and their form can create myths and histories. So, could you work, say, if you had the responsibility and were doing the self mastery work, and uh, could you work? How could you work with a dragon in, say, a psychic surgery session? Um, to well, first thing first, you would have made a relationship with the dragon, yes, as part of your bringing a protective piece around yourself and the clients coming in and you will have gotten good good enough at that where they're coming in and coming out is natural and you wouldn't beg them and a lot unfortunately a lot of light workers don't realize they beg okay they work off of what i call beganomics if you beg a dragon long enough it'll give you a bone but if you keep begging and begging and begging, it's just going to turn away and walk away. And it's all placebo effect at that point. Okay. So building the trust with them, 
in the in the protective frequency and then outside of the protective frequency how do you begin to have a communicative relationship that has an equal basis without you going through the bagonomics? Tell me this, 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 tell me this. Yeah. Okay. And once you get past bagonomics and realize there's an exchange for energy and the thoughts, ideas, and constructs that they want to work with you, then you can integrate them into being a part of your healing journey. Even though they've already been integrated from before that, they're just waiting for you to create the conscious integration moment in which your free wills can connect and expand the potentials of how dragons can change the nature of your healing. So there'll be that knowingness, won't there, with the dragon that you, right. it's in your reality? And yeah. I've, yeah. Hmm. Okay, what else do we have? Well, I think we've just answered that. What kind of work can one do together with the dragon? Okay, so that's a good question. Catherine, if Alexander the Great was one of the mega charisma beings chosen by Gaia to create change on her behalf, and his horse was later Seabiscuit, was that was it that Gaia coordinating with dragon energy? Was that Gaia coordinating with dragon energy in Alexander? Or was the horse a mega horse? Or was there dragon energy there? No, that second? horse was a mega horse to begin with that was paired with Alexander on purpose. It was a mega charisma manufacturing capacity. Okay, It was done on purpose at a time because what people don't realize with that question, that person's read the mystery schools and some of the other stuff that I did on dragons. And Alexander didn't just invade one reality, he invaded many realities. And he taught a form of brutal kinetic manipulation as a telepathic skill, a telekinetic skill. So oftentimes the swing of the sword could have thousands of kilograms of strength behind it. Okay. So they could create brutal kinetic effects from a, a blink of an eye or telekinetic processes. And Alexander needed to pull from the very edges of Earth's reality, the champions who wanted to step forward and work with dragons and begin unifying the timelines place to place to place, or actually disunifying the timelines, but that's that's semantics at this point. Hmm. Are dragons different from the draconians? Yes, draconians are a species who have reptilian lizard DNA, but that doesn't make them dragons, but they do have dragons in their society because they have a celestial frequency. And those dragons tend to agree with the types of free will that come from that celestial source. And again, not every celestial source sees free will the same way. I was going to ask actually, Andrew, I was going to say, what about the more sort of negative aspects of dragons? Uh, how could, how would, how do they serve in a service to self scenario? Well, dragons kind of run the, the Babylonian money magic system before AIs took over. And when the AIs took over, they realized they could never manage it as well as the dragons. Okay. So what? Did they hand it back to the dragons? No, the dragons basically went through a longer term teaching processes to the AIs because those dragons were either positives who were converted to negatives here or negatives from other worlds who transferred here to specifically train AIs in specific tactics so that the dragon's wisdom can be used in other places that were far more effective for it. So communication wise, does the dragon speak through a form of light language or do they have their own like universal language they communicate? They, they speak through light language but they start with the celestial language they were born under. Not all dragons were born on a celestial source. Some dragons were born in suns. Okay. And some dragons were born in central suns. And then they got to go through the, the experience of what it's like to be operating in a lower den density. But do they all have the uh, million letter celestial alphabet as their base language? You pretty much, but some operate would start with the one trillion letter of celestial alphabet. They're operating on a much the bigger source. So there's dragon schools. Yes. Okay. The Elkanor is like a dragon riding school. Hold it's an on. air city. 
Okay. Uh, on how to ride dragons, though. Well, more like being deputized by a by a marshal to go out and be a part of a posse to hunt things down. And you learn how to ride a dragon as part of you becoming a posse. And that's the type of school you go through. You volunteer time there. Are there any dragons in like a rock band? Yes. Yeah. And could you give us any examples or what, <laughs> what kind of creations they do? And Billy Joel. <laughs> um, wow. Elvis. Wow, I never knew that. <laughs> Um, I think Prince Prince is a I wouldn't say rock band yeah but kind of rock band because Prince Prince is a dragon isn't he? no Prince wasn't a dragon oh okay um, there are a few dragons in the Korean K-pop music industry like BTS and Blackpink I mean, they're getting two, three, four billion hits per song. Mm. They guarantee there's dragon energy in that shit. <laughs> Triple H, no. Triple, <laughs> yes. He wishes <laughs> he's the king of kings. Bullshit. What about Prince? Nope. No. You said that. Oh, sorry. Did you? I missed that. I was reading the questions. Is it Martin, Martin, uh, what's his name? Martin Luther King? No, that, Eminem. Not Martin, then, uh, no, no, M Eminem has got half dragon in him. Easy if you just told us. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the fun of just telling yeah. you? And what, what do you mean, what do you mean, mean by half dragon? Do you mean like when it is, there's a exchange of like DNA when he was created, but a bit of mix of two blended with two different things? Yes, and then after a while, the lineage, you know, you know, waters itself down. Okay. So one dragon could be in many lineages. Yes, or there could be many Something. lineages, many dragons is in many lineages. Yeah, it all depends how many times a dragon took the human form on, or yeah. dry humped the human form and left a pheromone on it. Oftentimes, dragons will just dry hump you. <laughs> <Yeah>. Why? <laughs> They're forcing consciousness into you, getting you through a catalyzation state, catalyzation state. I using these visceral terms, they are not raping you. Like okay. if a dog comes up and starts dry humping your leg, are they raping you? <laughs> no. 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 What is it saying though? <laughs> I'm horny. What is it saying? <laughs> You're my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Join me. <laughs> so, so, so Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son, was that he ha having to be got taken out because he was doing what Bruce Lee was doing, but in the film perspective, he was going. He was going to inevitably open the doorway to something he shouldn't. Okay. Mm. And was that time travel stuff then with the when the crow was filmed to be able to do that and change it around? What do you think? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's dragon irony right there. <laughs> <laughs> he was a beautiful man, Brandon Lee. Great actor. Okay. So are there any um are there any eggs that we have on earth that are ready to be hatched as we go through our great awakening process do we have millions any superstars upon, of dragons millions upon millions of dragon eggs lay unhatched all over the world are they within the subsurface or in earth They're spread everywhere hidden right, secretly okay. yeah hidden long time ago and they will awaken during the awakening and be a part of it and they're influencing it now while they're still in their egg time Mm. So you might actually mean we could see them with the hue with our eyes. A lot of people so, do see them with their eyes. Okay. What's the difference if you see it with your two eyes or your third eye? Which one's more real? Uh, yeah. 
And is there anything you can tell us about the dragon energy for the moment of now for everyone listening, if anything which could connect to us and what we're going through at the moment? Kind of a vague statement question, you know. <laughs> I'm playing with you. So, tell me about dragon energy God. from <laughs> any point of reference. <laughs> <laughs> You can tap into dragon energy at any moment, but why are you doing it? Are you ready for the responsibility if they answer back? And it's going to come down to, are you really ready to deal with something who's views free will differently than you and is going to demand you do your upkeep on your own? And if you end up being a D minus student, they will tell you to fuck off. Yeah. They'll call you a light worker and not realize that you, you not realize that's insulting. Okay. <laughs> I any when I can speak to my dragon, it's always I always raise my frequency and go do a fire ceremony. Um, yeah, which you should. That's how you show them I'm in equal co-creation with you. I'm taking the time, effort, and energy to do my due diligence. I can't oh, I come at I you from on. the monkey. I can't come at you from the monkey mind and throwing my monkey shit around with my hands. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I was. I was before we came onto this show. I thought I, I'm going to have to make some kind of gesture. Um, you know, and so I did, I held a fire ceremony and, and, and burned some frankincense and dedicated it to the, to the dragons and spoke with the dragons, almost like asking permission properly rather than yeah. just demanding that they show up. Yeah. Which is a huge difference. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who want to work with dragons. They don't realize and they're demanding them to show up and then yeah. demanding them to show them all of their wisdom. Mm -hmm. I ask everybody in the audience out there, to just look at your habit patterns when you want to know something. And for those people new to dragons, I can bring a dragon in my reality? Yes, you can. But it's going to ask back, what are you going to do for me too? Okay? And it's going to say, are you going to upkeep your energy? And if you can't hear those words because you don't upkeep your energy, at what point is the dragon not answering you at all and your own brain's creating your own bullshit? Okay? And that, that can be true for a lot of people in the beginning until they understand dragons will just kick sand in your face whenever you're trying to communicate to them if you're not going to be honest and come to them from the higher perspective by doing the due diligent work to make sure shit doesn't bleed through your reality and affect its reality. You have enough impulse control to say, I must make this a sacred moment. I must raise my frequency because it's my duty to myself and to the communication of this dragon. But when you do it, beautiful and you puppy. When you do it and continue to do it, it's a very um, potent feeling, isn't it? Yes. It's a very and beautiful potent. feeling, too. Yes. yes and is. beautiful feeling, yeah. too. Yeah. And, and, and it's the like they come into you as well. Yeah. And and that yeah. frequency when you connect them, it's a very fucking high frequency energy. Um, yeah, it's incredible. It can physically move me. And heal you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There yeah. are times there are certain dragons energy that come into me that fill me with this drive and vigor to never give up at the mm. mission. Yeah. And sometimes they come in at the moment like, fuck. I don't want to do another reading show. And then a dragon will come in and, you know, leave a, leave a little bit of dragon sparkle. Okay. One more show. <laughs> okay. oh. <laughs> it's time to sleep. And then, now, and then they're, they're the dragons who, who are the wordsmiths, you know, the ones, the muses that help me create documents and stay connected with the infinitude of, 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 the, the, the etheric workforces that are out there, precognitive and postcognitive workforces to refine documents instead of centuries, taking it days. And then me going through the great uh, um, amazement and wonderment as I'm wafting the shit just come out from the tips of my fingers. And there's a dragon in my crown chakra with a little monocle on laughing his ass off. <laughs> okay. They dance the keyboard, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they dance they through the keyboard. You've had that, yeah, Laura, in your yeah. own writing situations. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they do. And you just you just enjoy it. Right. Mine comes through my voice as well. Same um, with me. Voice, yeah. fingers, 
Yeah. Toes. E energy yeah. field. Like my arms lift like wings. Um. And you I see, never really asked for connection. I think it's um because it naturally happens in you. Yeah. Because you yeah. coded it in your DNA as you were growing from the old Laura who had mm -hmm. a meek energy to the yes. new Laura who's holding her strength and power and creating her reality out of her will. Yeah. 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 Working with the dragon energy though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can invite the dragons into many different processes once you've built up that level of respect. So one thing that I do is I bring, I don't like the term my dragon, but a dragon that works close with me into yeah, the your, sacred one of mountain. Your posse. One of yeah, your yeah, what, that's right. Into the sacred <laughs> mountain. So when I'm at the top of sacred mountain, it comes to bring me down to the bottom of sacred mountain. And little, little tricks like that where you can just bring them into your hologram, into, 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 into your multidimensional awareness. They love that shit. I was actually going to ask Matty if he wanted to share, like, how mistakes that could be made when you call in your dragon too. Because you're quite experienced in calling in dragon energy. And I'm also very experienced in mistakes. Well, I... well so... this is where mistakes can be teachers, Matty. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I thought you'd be a good teacher for this one. Well... I put you on the spot. Yeah, so well, I'm trying to to cherry pick up something. I, I'm just, you know, let's go with more recently. More recently, it was sexual energy. So for me, when I process dragon energy, it's very often sexual. Even if it's something that's not a sexual process, I can use that sexual stimulation, that sexual energy to then gain the momentum I need in any given direction. And it seems to be that that's the way they operate. But when I allow it in sometimes, it can be absolutely overwhelming. And they don't care. Well, not that they don't care, but they're not going to step in for the choices that you're going to make. And you can make, you can just carry it away. When you're full of any kind of energy, any over enthusiasm, you can get carried away. You know, and it right. can and it can go on and on and on as a destructive process. Um, ultimately, ultimately, you always learn from. Ultimately, it. why they would seed that much energy into you is for you to have temptation control and impulse mm -hmm. control. Exactly. Meaning something that's inside of you has a weakness to temptation and, and then the actual in controlling of the impulse in the moment. Mm -hmm. And when you're filled with that much energy, oh boy, does temptation look awful easy. Like when you asked the other day about doing dragon hot seat, most, <laughs> most bitches put it right right to the edge of temptation like, <laughs> like for his casino full-on pressure from all directions to bet one more time instead of cashing out <laughs> but that's that's their way of teaching isn't it yes yeah. about free will yeah. yeah about free will yeah and some of the basics about free will is impulse control break those two words down impulse control that breaks into just about every aspect of your choice-based reality. If you don't have impulse control, you are one of the program sheeple. Yeah. Think about that. Without impulse control, how can you do sacred work? Mm -hmm. so that's been a big lesson yes. for me over the last yeah. 10 yeah. years. And it comes down to every, almost every thought sometimes. You can, you know, there's an impulse to have a, a, to keep thinking. There's an impulse to rush around. There's an impulse to do this, to do that. And it's almost a moment to moment basis. Impulse, impulse, impulse. And to slow that down and just start making actual right. free will choices. Yeah, and call out the program. And has it, has it been many sightings in this reality then um, of dragons in this 3D reality? Of P and obviously it being taken away from us yes yeah there have been many 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 sightings do they make it to mass air no because there's a system to make sure none of that comes through some of it's got through though little bits and bobs at places they haven't created like with the loch ness monster they had like with the pediosaurus they haven't created like a loch ness this monster type for dragon have they what they've done is put it into myth yeah all right so here's a great question statement from claire chamberlain 
I've had a hard time distinguishing sometimes between impulse or intuition or going with the flow of synchronicity. Very, very oh. key learning point and self-honesty, self-belief, self-healing, self-nurturing. When you've done enough of this, the impulse will come forward to do with choice. Intuition is to do. You don't need the choice. It's been solved by your precognitive workforce already, but you still have the choice. That's the difference between raw impulse and raw intuition. Intuition gives you the calculated statements from all the other etheric realms who are saying that this might be good, this might be bad, it's still a free will, this is the forecast, the energetic mm -hmm. forecast of what's about to happen. That's intuition. And then what is the flow of synchronicity? That is a combination of both impulse in the moment, intuition giving you many choices, even though two of the two of the natures of the impulse say it will be perfect and one of the natures of the impulse says it could be negative meaning your free will going in must be very exacting meaning there's a limited amount of wiggle room in free will to make the next action in synchronicity happen let's say you're about to meet a person that you've you 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 see a person across the room and energy fulfills you oh i must talk to this person and that per energy falls over that person too the closer you get to each other, intuition blends with impulse, and then karma takes over. What is the karma that's between you? And that's that what you're asking about the flow of synchronicity. It's when karma takes over the rules, but free will has gotten you to the eye glance moment. Yes. Okay. Does that help, Claire? Yes, yes, it did. Good for you. Mm. Uh, Lana said, can you ask Andrew why were Earth's dragons kicked out of Earth at one point in the past? Because they were too rebel awakening of human beings, forcing evolution rapidly, creating resources throughout time and space that the, the negative systems didn't want. They, And when you have a creationary being that's not under your control and a reality you're trying to control, what do you do? Purge them. Mm -hmm. Urge him. And what kind of um, process was used to banish a being of the magnitude of a dragon? Nuclear weapons. Really? Yeah. But they were refined to make sure the dragon didn't regenerate like a Doctor Who regeneration. Hmm. And so many of them just, they ran. They just went. No, most of them were killed. Wow. I would say a good 90% of the dragons were killed. Yeah. And then whatever left was, whatever was left was that was visiting other realms or eggs that had been seeded in other worlds by earth dragons who knew a destruction was going to come at some point. Mm -hmm. But they seeded the next generation in other places and spaces who would eventually take over and come back to here. Mm -hmm. Good. So what's that, um, the dark dragon, like forced evolution, like do they have battles with the other side of the dragon? Is there any battles going on between them? So here, so now I'm going to break my own rules because I, I'm having fun. Good. Because having you, you group of people ask questions and knowing that I'm not going to get a what's my purpose out of you other than a joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So a lot of the dark dragons – they don't really want to be involved in the earth mess. They are because it just serves their, their celestial source. Many of the dark dragons are battling beings of the abyss, beings of great annihilation. If you are a HP Lovecraft fan, the Cyclopean giants of the ancient histories and the ancient, ancient pasts, okay, the Cthulhu type energy. They're regularly doing battle with that because they want to be the dark energy of this place. And oftentimes the abyss, other dark energies from other places and forgotten realities will form there and make their way out of the abyss and try to fuck with this part of the galaxy. It's no different than gangs in one city sending a bunch of people on a train and getting off the train, renting a house, and then going and taking over a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So many of the, the darker type dragons here, they're regularly battling the things in the abyss. 
because it is their form of forced evolution. But this does not inherently make a, they, them our allies in any way. They're doing service to their celestial sources by working with the negatives that are influencing these areas. Because the mm-hmm. celestial sources are saying, I'm creating this dragon who's going to do this, and there's going to be a long-term karmic exchange between these species until such a time there is a resolution to it. Mm. Much like each side of a gang war sees themselves as being the righteous one. Exactly. Then would you have many dragons in sacred neutral then in the middle ground greys? Um, it changes. Like now we probably have a lot more in sacred neutral than we have in the last two, two, three thousand years. But so many of them as soon as they regenerate a significant portion from their sacred neutralness, they go right back into action. It's like a soldier who just goes and does another tour and another tour and another tour and another tour and another tour. tour. So as much as the ranks have been built, it, it ultimately doesn't really make a difference in the bigger point of view. Okay. Because so many of them are still occupied in the astral warfare in this part of the galaxy. Mm. Yeah. And another tour. And another tour. Oh. So is that the dragon's main... As much as the ranks have been built... Uh, Nathan, mm-hmm. could you mute and turn your video off, please, buddy? Mm-hmm. It's a bigger point of view. Do that. Uh, so whoever's host, if you just hover over them, you, you could just hit mute and turn the video off right there. In the astral warfare yeah, in this second. part of the galaxy. There he is, Nathan else. Mute. I've got him. Yeah. There, I got him. <laughs> it kept moving. Yeah. It kept going up. <laughs> so they just kept disappearing away from me. Like, there you are, Nathan. Got you. <laughs> so is that a dragon's main um, motivation to serve its celestial source? Yes. Yeah. So they have not free its will own, from it's it. not its only. And no. main is not necessarily the right word. No. Um, initial... Long-term commitment. Right. To the celestial source. To its to, celestial to source. To its celestial source. Where who then allows is. it to build a life that is transgalactic. And it's saying, you can still operate transgalactic, but I still need parts of your many selves here to do this work here. I um, encourage you to go out and search, but leave many um, avatars and higher selves here to function with what I need over here. And that's what happens. And do all of those pieces and parts of the dragons have free will? Yes. And that includes the dark as well. They have free will to their celestial source. Correct. And that's not just in this universe. It's all universes. No, no, no. Every universe has perceives free will slightly different, which what makes the the greater differences. And one degree to the left or the right makes a gigantic significance in how DNA is going to be formed to allow free will to begin with. So you've said dragons have the capacity in the past to take over galaxies. Um, has that ever happened with any dragons doing that? Yes, but it was not to like a mob go and take over a galaxy. It was more to get life out of the galaxy before a cataclysmic event was going to destroy that whole galaxy. So it's like a massive rescue mission. Um, there, there are many times that that the dragons will will begin to ride in three, four, five million at a time, all with riders, and they have no destination. They're just out riding the waves of the universe, and then they'll get a calling from the wilds of the universe, like chaos itself has spoke to them. And then they'll turn around and go in a different direction and then arrive in mass at a place with only a a whisper from the universe to go that way. And then imagine you're a human looking up. What the fuck is that shit? (laughs) (laughs) What is that? (laughs) Okay. What is that? So does many... anybody have triggered? Does anybody have memories like that? You're not just hoeing the ground, okay? 
tending your watermelons and something's up in the sky and you look up and you see thousands of dragons coming out of a portal. That shit triggered me when I was young. I've seen something like that. All right. So now I'm going to let you in on a little, little, little something about me. I, I, I like watching Asian television, not the crazy game shows that they do. Okay. Korean TV and Korean movies are as high quality of Hollywood, if not better. The same thing with a lot of the Chinese and, and Hong Kong movies that are out there. They, they allow their people to have longer stories and build characters instead of everything done in 90 minutes. There is a absolutely terrible, terrible movie about dragons that was done in the 1994, maybe 1995 called Dragon Wars. I highly recommend that you not watch it. But for those that are dragon curious, you will see some weirdo dragon creations that are both Asian influenced, European influenced, sci-fi fantasy influenced. And the raw creativity, knowing I told you not to watch the story, you're only going in to see the special effects that still are as good of enough today to be modern special effects of today. Okay? And one of the storylines is the woman who is born and is a virgin and just before her 18th birthday, if she doesn't get laid and has a kid, a dragon will come out of her skin. Okay, And they've been holding it back from cutting out of her skin for 500 years as she's reborn and reborn. The male of the story is the prince that's supposed to rescue her, except they got lost and um, they were separated. And then, you know, as Asian stories, they're suddenly in Los Angeles in the 1990s. And she's a white American and he's a half Asian, half black guy, <laughs> Asian or white guy, you know, you know, race swapped. <laughs> Okay, modified for an American story in which dragons of the most unusual types come out to guarantee a fight between the good dragon and the bad dragon. And then, you know, good dragon, dragon, dragon stories. Anyways, it's called Brain Fire. Hold on, what did I? War of the Dragons. Dragon Wars. Dragons. Dragon, Wars. Dragon Wars. Yes. And it's a Korean movie. And I warned you not to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> So what was your experience like when you when you're uh, in this lifetime this, when you started when that dragons? when that when that movie came out it was the first big budget korean movie to be released in america i think ever okay i mean there might have been some um some of the korean cop movies that came through but biggest budget that had been released in decades and decades and it hit like 1200 theaters here so it was actually like everyone's you got to go see this. You got to go see it. The special effects are awesome. The story is horrible. But that's what we got back then. We got 90 minute action movies that had no character development. And it was just the same superstar replaying the same guy in a different form. And it's what it's what special effects or before special effects. What fight scenes were we going to see that's new? What explosions that are new? What car axes, car chases? That's all we got. All right. Anybody else want to bring anything up about dragons? Well, we've got a few questions here um, still in the chat. So Nathan wants to know what's the connection with dragons. And he's written it country, the country Wales. So I'm going to take it that that's what he means and not Wales like fish um, with dragons and the country Wales. And I, I was going to say, Andrew, is it because... There's not so much that there's any particular dragon energy in Wales. I could be totally wrong. Is no, it more no, to there's do with plenty, the... There's, there's plenty of dragon energy all throughout the British Isles. Right, but... In no... fact, there are many places that eggs are underneath the soil waiting to be tended and grown or to have sacred groves of trees to be planted around them so that they can, the trees can be nurtured by the, the dreaming energy inside the egg. It right. is a unique resource that many of the Celtics and Druids knew about and knew where the eggs were stored when going regularly grab them to bring it to a place in which they were going to make a new sacred space. 
What are the right. example, examples, Andrew, of places? Because I'm from England. <laughs> oh, 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 examples, oh, oh, come on, Stonehenge, come on. Stonehenge, oh, oh, Stonehenge. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wherever there's a sacred place that the Druids built on and then the, 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 everybody else put their church on top of it. But does that mean there's more in Wales than anywhere else? Or is this more to do the symbolism of the flag, which is not... No. So, so let me ask about the country of Wales. Yeah. In Wales deep underground and near the subsurface are large volumes of dragon eggs. They have always been rich hunting fields, <clears throat> except you need very, very experienced wizards or off-worlders to be able to find them. You have to think of it like having a special truffle hunting animal, but you got to do it from such a high state of perspective to find out how to get it into a manifestation in which you can put a box around it. And what is that box? Isolating it in a reality instead of it being in a full fluid of reality. And then that box has to simulate full fluid reality and convince the egg that it's not being taken somewhere else, which has this infinite wisdom energy behind it. That's how hard it is to gather dragon eggs. Okay. Wales is known for its many dragon eggs are there if you're willing to solve the conundrum of the lands. Could you oh, use dowsing rods to hunt, look for them? Yes, you can use two sticks rubbing together. You're for it, Dale. Yeah, I'm and up for it, man. Is... I'll come down. Let's do it. Let's, let's organize this. <laughs> and is it is it anything to do with the mountains there? Wales being hillier or more yes. mountainous? Yes, wherever yeah. there's mountains, plains, yeah. everything. Yes, yeah. dragons are owned there. Yes. Yeah, same in Scotland. I'm sure the dragon yeah. has had an outhouse there in a, in a summer cabin. <laughs> Holiday <laughs> home. <laughs> okay. What do dragon's parts smell like? We did that, didn't we? we oh, didn't no. Do, no. Oh, no, we, we did do, do that one. What's the difference between a dragon birthed from sun to a world? Say that again. What's the difference between a dragon birthed from the sun to a world? I, I think he means from a. Okay, that sun. means what? What? Yeah, what means what frequency of time that it's born in? So a right. planet is a sub frequency of time within a solar system. So a dragon born on a planet would have its 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 signature frequency match is to that planet's time frequency, a sub-frequency of a solar system. If something is born in the sun, its master frequency will be the bigger scale because the sun operates moving around the central sun instead of the, the, the lesser level because time goes down from universal time, galactic time, into local planet time. Local planet time, astral, local planet surface, local planet subsurface. That's how many different frequencies of time there are. There are many more, but that's just to give you the example of how time functions. When we do ceremony calling upon the wind spirits, are those actually dragon energy names? Or how are elementals related to dragons from Catherine? Well, elements respond to our commands of proper wisdom. Proper wisdom is a state of expression, all that you know, as a ceremonial process in which you are sending the belief and that belief is transmuting, transforming and metamorphosizing the elements there to take on the shapes that you are showing, but also the intelligence behind that is creating those shapes in such a way to create awe and inspiring in you to create an activation of geniuses. One side activates the genius of the other and the other side reactivates the genius of the originator, making it an, an, an infinite genius loop. Uh, from Marissa, how to identify ad, um, dragons in our community? Difference in being connected to dragons and being a dragon. Well, that takes long-term discernment. There is no, <laughs> here's your answer. And if you were to ask your dragon that question, it would kind of be like in a Dale situation where it would simply look back and go, you aren't ready for it. You're, you're not ready for for that. Not to say that this person or person is the nature of that type of question. Yeah. Okay. Oh, There's a lot in personal discernment to learn 
what what that means and you don't instantly get instant personal discernment we earn it every time we make a mistake and learn from it I just I now so when I do ask questions and speak to it I strategize and make sure <laughs> and yeah. raise my frequency enough to do it so from doing that responsibility and a big lessons for me came um and it was there obviously just to teach me um even though it was a, a, a stupid ass question I think it was something to do with what time or when in dream space I'll have more be seeing seeing the dragon more but it gave me that answer of laughing and just saying obviously I can't control and do anything to synchronicity it's just <laughs> it's what's the purpose of what you're asking is it just for the sake of having some benign skill is it or is it a part of your actual process something that you've thought about something that's going to make a difference to your process going forward you know they're yeah. not going to answer a silly question like you know saying how do i know where every cat in the world was had their last five lives because why would you even need to know that it was in my life back in my light worker days a long time ago <laughs> yeah exactly i'm a recovering light worker t- 11 years ago i was a light worker 10 years ago hi my name is dale and i'm a light worker <laughs> <I'm> a- <laughs> me and laura have had some funny funny we've gone through similar experiences and stuff so we've yeah, but, but you did but, Palladian swing, did you? Spin, spin, swing! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so from Sean, so dragon traveling, do they fly the physical distance, fly through portals, or just teleport through time? All of the above. Yeah. Or the good old taxi service. <laughs> right. They. It's whatever they want, however they want, whenever they want, and how flashy they want to do it. Um, from Jennifer, is it common for us to work with multiple dragons or just one? Multiple. A collective mind. Yeah. Is there any truth to the Dragon Ball and can you... series? No. No, Dragon, Dragon Ball Z wishes... alone. <laughs> oh sorry Z it's a load of balls <laughs> and, and you've said that everyone has a dragon Andrew so wh- when is this manifest is it like a guide guardian for your lifetime um, what's the process of that so first of all every time there is a fetus in the womb a dragon energy is linked to that womb energy because that womb inside that mother is still a womb, a womb in another space and time. It's a, it's how the collective mind of the planet works. So a dragon is assigned to that womb, and as that individual signature frequency grows from infinite into finite, the dragon will begin the translation process of what the great forgetting is, how free will works etc etc as they begin to evolve the final codex of all contracts that have been potentialized in the fetus and womb journey so kind of think of like the dragon is like the final auditor of the contracts who tells you what the difficulty level this life is going to be and you're going to have to develop these skills very early and if you don't it's going to go terribly wrong and then if it does go terribly wrong here's plan b here's plan c here's plan e d and f and of all those failed, you still have free will to get through it. And then you forget, and you come on the other side, and the dragon goes, hi, I'm your dragon teacher, and begins to reteach you everything that you've just <laughs> forgot. <laughs> okay? And then you're growing up, and Dada's the dragon, and all of a sudden, Dada's not the dragon, and the dragon's like, all right, when he's nine or ten, I'll come back around. Okay? And then they might come back around a little bit more, all to see where they're at in the unpacking and uncoding of what passed through the great forgetting. That's your relationship with dragons, your individual one. Now, does that take up a large part of their life? No, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> but you're the individual they're assigned to as a mission from this planet. They're still giving it you their all. I mean, because they're they they can operate in many realities at once. And you were saying before, I don't think we, this was on a show, this was private, you're saying um, that dragons sometimes take on the form of angel to look like an angel and they yes. take on, yeah, for people. Yes. They're, they're what you need at the moment. Because they understand your spiritual contracts. 
Hold on, I got to switch devices. My computer's gonna die. Some form, less than shaped and formed. Yes. So, do plant energies like ayahuasca have a relationship with dragons? Can so I, or do dragons use hallucinogens? I hold on. Catherine. Yeah. Ayahuasca is ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is not dragon energy. Ayahuasca is the mother energy that comes through the plant form to guide people back to grounding, purification, and a better understanding of the spiritual world that's around you and how it interacts with you. It's not meant to be a religion, ayahuasca itself. And it's not meant to, for people to be doing it hundreds of thousands of times, even though there would be many out there who would disagree. So ultimately, dragons are not ayahuasca. Do as ayahuasca invite a dragon in to be a part of a greater communication? Yes, it does. But it all depends on what's its greater purpose. What is the awakening of this being going to do? What types of off-world connections is it going to create? Because oftentimes when ayahuasca is working with somebody, it has its agenda, obviously, but to operate in a different function, meaning if you can become spiritually balanced here and begin to open up to a ceremonial life, your astral world has a tremendous amount of freedom that can open up huge areas of personal work in the astral world to be done, which will allow you to work with other beings. You won't know what's going on on the other side, but just you being free here in the now has changed the equations up there. And has allowed you to function in many other densities and dimensions. And oftentimes dragons go recruiting. Like we need to go into this reality and figure it out. Does Why is this brand new timeline been created by the negative? I need 50 dragons to step up with riders and to go in as a group and start figuring it out. Why? What makes this new timeline they made different? Does Jimi Hendrix have contracts to do that, Andrew B and Ayahuasca B? Oh, that's a pretty broad question. At, at uh, point, well, my, my uh, yeah, because a lady I know uh, who did an ayahuasca uh, medicine with one of Jimi Hendrix's family members, and uh, she saw him and stuff like that. So just interesting to see if he okay. played, yeah. So do, can or do dragons use hallucinogens? Yes. If I, you want me to tell you what a dragon trip was, was like, I can't. No, it's Catherine, Catherine, Catherine's question. But, yeah. I can't tell you what, if a dragon is on hallucinogens, I can't tell you what it's like. But I can tell you they do use hallucinogens, yes. Damn. Can I tell you what those hallucinogens are? No, I can't. Where are the hidden, Andrew? Where are the, the whales? I don't want to tell you where their stash is, no. <laughs> Under the dragon egg. <laughs> Apparently, Dale, your laugh is just like you and McGregor's. <laughs> it is. I, I saw that in the chat room too, and I agree. It's just like you and McGregor's. <laughs> All right. Yes. Do we want to bring anybody on who wants to share a dragon story? That would be good. So, so we don't have to. Room, Anyone like to come on and ask a question so I don't have to keep reading them? <laughs> yes. Because we love our audience. We do. We'd like to see you now. Hit that like and subscribe <laughs> button. <laughs> <laughs> They've all gone now. They put do you want to share, share what's going on then, Laura, with the upcoming uh, co-creation while we've got a second? Yeah, while well, we're waiting for people yeah. to unmute. And... Okay, so... Dale is joining Matty and I in Two Feathers Medicine, which doesn't mean at the moment we'll be Three Feathers Medicine. We're going to stay Two Feathers Medicine. But for the ease of all the posts we're doing now, um, Dale will be coming on board with us. He'll still have his Symmetry of Health and his Talking Stick shows if he's got time for them. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll be with I'll be us. bringing my kids oh. on next <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but he'll be he'll be uh, working with us and Andrew on this uh, very exciting new platform and we have now started to post on locals I don't know whether you had a chance to have a look today Andrew but I've yes started... I have it's looking okay. very good 
Yeah, we've started to actually interact now with um, locals, which one of us will check every day. So if you've anything you want to interact with us on there, you you have to log in um, and join. But it, it's free to actually log into locals, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a different, um, much less monitored platform than YouTube and Facebook. Basically, so. we can say whatever we want to say on there, short of violence and extreme racism, meaning we're not going to have our channel kicked off for talking about the thingy thing they don't want us to talk about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's the latest. So we're getting there, doing a, a you know quite a lot of hard work at the moment to try and get you a lot of material out there and obviously there's a lot of new material coming from Andrew. Um, yeah and as I said I wanted to change too. I wanted to be able to work more closely with people and show through some of the greater growths. I mean those two light language classes are really a lot of people are, are affected by it. People who would never listen, listen to a light language got caught from the four of us going back and forth. Yep. Now yeah. each one had a unique individuality to it. It was yeah. funny because I, I was on the way back after I spoke to you and I got a copy, Andrea, came back and I saw a car which reminded me of my first girlfriend and I started doing light language, did some tangle for her. I was like, I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there must have been something I needed to go into. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, it was a great little, great, great little thing to do. Uh, Dale, you Ooh. haven't got everybody like, so they can't come in, have you? It's just that everyone's gone quiet. Yeah, I think you can raise your hand. I think if so, if anybody wants to come in, if you want to post in the chat, and I can put your raise video your on. hand, and then he'll give you permission to unmute. Come on, guys, you've got the galactic historian here. Yes, or even any experience you've had uh, with dragon energy as well. Um, doesn't have to be questions; it could just be your own experience. Just something to. Absolutely. Let Let's hear it. There we go. We've got one person. Hey, well Let me done, find my phone. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, it's done, eh? To ask to unmute. Uh, that's to start video. So ask to unmute. Yeah. So you unmuted and your video is on. Hello, hello. Can you hear Hi. Me? Hi. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. I've been really enjoying the last uh, last three shows and learning a lot. <laughs> And kind of figuring out my dream time. It's like been a crazy four and a half months. Yeah. Well, it's only going to get crazier. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone. For me to get a collective for everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. But the synchronicities of coming up here to Cornell, British Columbia, Canada to Dragon Lake in South Quinnell was like, it was magical. Yeah, I could see like, there's when I first stopped there, because I was led from Prince George BC to Quinnell just by spirit and drove straight up to this dragon lake and a guy was fishing there and he was just, he looked like a ferryman ready to take me across the water. It was crazy. <laughs> see, that's when the universe gives you something weird like, is that a fairy driver or a fishy man? <laughs> it starts with an F. Fairy fish. Yeah. Well, apparently it's full of lots of goldfish. So <laughs> that's what the locals say. So, yeah. Goldfish, so. goldfish are good eating. Yeah, that's what I understand it. Yeah. They're good eating. I haven't tasted one yet. <laughs> I have. That's because I'll eat anything once. <laughs> yeah. Lots of fishing up here. Yeah, that's for sure. Lots of salmon, fresh salmon coming up the waters. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, your, your shows have been magical. They have brought me to a much, much higher place. Sometimes I, when I'm doing fire ceremony, because the last time we talked, Andrew, you said um, three times a week. I'm yep. working on it daily. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? It's hard. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like sometimes you get busy in your day and I'm like, oh my goodness, I didn't do my fire ceremony. And but then you got to summon the will to start the fire. Because if you don't have the will to start the fire, it won't start, will it? No, no. And uh, yeah, we're hoping to with uh, First Nations here. I said to Archie Shantyman, I said, you know, when I came back from the University of Washington just last week, I said, um, I stopped to smudge before I came down into the city, like right by Dragon Lake. And I said to Archie, I says, we need to do like a large fire ceremony at the top of the hill and just to clear the energy through through here. So, because First Nations are very stuck. Well, that's been going on for a long time. And that was actually, um, how do I put this? Even before white man's arrival to Turtle Island, there was a interrogatory process, and that's a law term, between courts, of how to deal with the disputes in these lands. Mm -hmm. And because there were so many things that can be considered highly sacred, one, I, I over-identified with the other. Right. And we are now seeing over-identification as a major ownership journey like this group's going to own this thing and this group's going to own this thing they're going to make it legal fiction and the, once they're making it legal fiction they're not doing it under the rules of spirit right and that right. ultimately is their greater growth into the spiritual awakening just like the human bankers who do it to the super extremes or or so on and so forth it's a cultural yeah. healing uh, out of ownership and back into stewardship Right. Yes. Yes. Well, they're sure uh, they're sure building, expanding the nations for the peoples to come up here to heal. That's for sure. Yeah. It's incredible and just incredible in such a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your uh, for your teachings. They've been just incredible. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for learning for a little. <laughs> it's it's been it's been a trying time because when i first started listening to i think i discovered you through magenta pixie and uh it was like oh my god this is way over my head i do not understand them. what he's saying <laughs> but i just kept at it and at it and it's been well i gosh two and a half or more years yeah so i've learned a great bit bit and have I know a lot more to go. Was it really that hard to learn when you look back on it? Oh or my was god. It just resistance fuck, to fuck learn? Yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, it was hard. <laughs> yeah. Was it oh, hard yeah. because you had a lot of resisting factors in you? More than more than likely. I found uh, Martina really uh helpful um yep. for me to discern. Um, what you were saying she brought it down into the terms that I understood it a lot better uh -huh. so I found watching those and then just going through kind of led by spirit to know which video it just came up on my feed and I would plug in and I don't know how many hundreds I thousands I've watched of your videos <laughs> good but there are a lot of yeah. people that have done that if there's anybody in the chat, go ahead and say, say how many videos you've watched. A lot of people here are going to say a lot. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you watch Dale. Who are you, Andrew? Sorry, what you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I've, I, I've, I've probably Thousands watched. Of hours. Yeah, yeah. Since 2013, um, it was just never ending, really. Um, and each each episode, each teaching, each week is, was so different and giving me that perspective of I have to do it myself. Uh, I can't have anyone else doing it for me. And I was a recovering light worker back in 2013 um, where I fought and was looking for instant gratification, looking for archangels to save me. Um, then finding Andrew's material in 2013 made me understand uh, I had a lot of shit wrong with me <laughs> and I needed to go really into that shit. And uh, through ceremonial living and not being obsessed with the journey, I, I found clarity and here I am today. <laughs> <clears throat> and the thing is with Andrew's teachings, that 
you know, I, I was, I was I, the same as Dale. I came into Andrew around about 2014 and I just digested and digested and digested. But what I wasn't doing was all of the techniques or at least enough of the techniques. And it wasn't until maybe 2016, 2017, possibly that I started to binge on everything. So when you listen to all of the information, some things stick, some things don't. And that's the same with the practices as well. There's such a plethora of different practices that Andrew's put out there. And as long as you pick some along the way, you're going to find stuff that sticks. And then once you get that daily practice, it grows and it evolves and it grows and it evolves. And then you see the other layers in the teachings that previously would have gone straight over your head. It's, a, it's an ongoing process. But it is just, for me, it's, it's about taking as much as possible and seeing what fits and what sticks. Would you agree, Dale? Yes, I, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and that not trying to be obsessed. And that was a big turning point for me. 2014, 15, I was doing too many fire ceremony. I was, I was obsessed with the journey. Uh, I was doing too many ancestral offerings. And it made me kind of go into a shaman's death about and realize I need time off from the journey. I need to be a human. Um, I need to switch off from all the spiritual stuff at least one day a week. And that's that created such growth for me, actually switching off and not having the burden on my back of always trying to fucking do shit. Um, so then, I went through right. it. Yeah. And then you find that you expand. You expand like that. It's not like going up a level. It's an expansion. And then yep. that downtime you can have. You can have it whenever you whenever you choose, even if you want it for you know longer periods of time, because you have the potency behind you to make the work that you do do super high frequency potent with intention, not just for the sake of being super high frequency, but because you have a purpose and a direction. There you go. I think the biggest thing for me was that just to live, laugh, and play every day. Um, that's one of the mottos in my mental wellness and addiction stuff. And um, through that process, because we do put that pressure on ourselves, I found that for myself, I just reminded me and Andrew, you did it and all the community did it, you know, live, laugh and play every day. That's right. But there's that, is there discipline in play? Oh, yes. I, uh, yeah, because I'm over disciplined. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Needed the joy. <laughs> yeah yeah because everything else was boring <laughs> <laughs> that's even funnier <laughs> i think also from after a while of listening to andrew i realized what he was asking for um even not doing so in words but just in his energy output was a co-creation with you yes the co-creation with all his audience and that's very much what it's become for me and i'm sure it is with um, many of you not just matty mm -hmm. and dale too but i feel yeah. like i work a lot in the unseen uh, probably with many of you because many of you are in my dreams again not just andrew matty and dale but but many people i feel we have a lot of great co-creative energy in joy right. in this journey and in passion and that's very much what's needed at this time, I'm feeling, and very much why we've all come together to do this, because so many of our shows are actually um, very amusing. I think they're a great deal of fun. <laughs> after, a decade, we're, after a decade, we are bonded by the practice. Yes. And the more that we are serious about the practice and allow it to, allow it to grow us, then we become more authentic. When we become more authentic, then we can get together in our own unique ways. And we can, tell, we can say to the audience out there, all these people here have never had a bad word for each other at all. I can say that to you. I've known Laura now for a few years and mm. we've never even come to even so much as a slight disagreement, have we, Laura? No, you never... You Not never even so much as a me. slight disagreement. No. no. Nor Dale, nor Andrew. Because we're bonded through these teachings and these self-mastery processes. Yeah. You guys can't say it better than I You guys, because you guys are emanated. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the so, so we've got 15 minutes left and it's anybody, should we go on to another question? See if anybody's got a few quick questions. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. Love to the uh, Dandy Lion tribe. Thank you. Until Nathan was. So I'm just trying to put Nathan in. Put your hands up. I'll still unmute. Oh, hello. 
Hello, where are you calling Hello. from? Hello, I'm Nathan. I'm from Wales. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I can't remember Nathan. <laughs> I don't know. Well, actually, I don't know, Andrew, if you remember me. I'm the I'm the you, I me, you. Yeah. Yes. Yep, I remember. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> we talked about that, the how special that was, yeah, not long ago. <laughs> how you doing, man? How, how has your how, how has your recovery been? Um it's been okay. Uh, at times, it's been quite difficult, particularly with two of them. That it's just trying to harmonise and to come and bring them together when they have had a probably yeah. In, if I admit it, they've had too long to have too much control. So uh-huh. I'm just kind of I've just placed them in like that loving energy, and I just. I think I've learned, particularly the last month, I've just got to surrender to that because I felt like I was almost, I had a too high expectation of it coming back in the speed I want. So instead I'm going back to a natural flow. Okay. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I mean, I feel actually when I said that, it feels from my heart right. Sure, but the heart doesn't always say the right answers. Okay. So let's go through a validation process. So we're going to actually interrogate your heart. Okay. It doesn't mean the heart is right or wrong. It just, it perceives differently. Okay. All right. So is this choice to surrender a long-term goal and strategy or a short-term goal and strategy? But just let your subconscious answer. Short term. Or your heart. Short term. What does it solve in the short term? That will give me passage of time so I don't have to actually get to the core of it. So it's still ultimately an avoidance mechanism to make it take it longer to your core. Yes. Instead of directly facing them, this is the chicken move. Yes which is what you've been repeating over and over again and why this choice seems so easy to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you afraid of confronting the other side? Uh, um, Because of the abuse. Okay. The abuse it does to you or the abuse that was done to you? Done to me. Okay. So how is the abuse that was done to you in the past creating this frequency of control now? Yeah, it's just you avoidance. You've given it the power. It's, it's yeah. avoidance. Now you've given it the power and you're avoiding getting it back. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, thank you. Because you know that that part of you will get ugly on you. Yes. Yes. And you're tired of the the psychic vomit it creates. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, you need to create specialty skills that help immunize you versus psychic vomit. So when you are ready to take it on, you have more skills built up to stop the psychic vomit. It's like all this vomit comes on your windshield wiper and you can't get it off fast enough. Yeah. Yes. That's how it wins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No, that makes I've got a clearer picture. Thank you. So so you what you can do is have a fire hose in your hand. Okay. Or even better yet, have you ever seen the steam cleaning wands, how they can peel paint off of walls? Oh yeah, yes, yes. So I want you to see a, a high pressure steam wand in your hand. So it will hurt. Yeah, you'll you'll par cook a cow. You'll put <laughs> a steam cook a cow in like three minutes. That's how yeah. fast these, these things heat up. Okay, Hi. high pressure Hi. steam wand. <laughs> and when it starts coming in, throwing the vomit at you, that's how you're wiping it off, and then actually spraying it with the high pressure steam wand. Right. Yeah. Okay. I like that. No, I like no, that. It's it's it, it's a fire energy inside you. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're not only using water, but you're using you're using 
the, the steam and the, the steam energy, the water and the light and the heat. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because I've I've done quite a few times where I've really created a steamy bathroom by running the shower and then going into a bath of salt and sage and, uh -huh. and allowing my energy to really soak up through that steam energy. Uh -huh. Which I have felt really beneficial, particularly around the edges of my aura. Uh-huh. Um so yeah. Is that kind of um, that as well? Those are aspects, not wholenesses of you. Right, okay. And aspects have to be integrated into the wholeness, which is the you trying to make sense out of the reality that's inside you. Yeah. The one that actually makes the free will choices. The soul who's operating the voice box right now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And not the programs that are running the, the the script. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, thank you. Okay. So let me ask you one more question. Yes. This is this is a heart a heart question. Okay. Who else are you afraid of inside there? Myself. Which I, are there other are there other I me U's that have taken control in the past and have gone away but could come back at any moment? Yes. And they're kind of like comic book characters who suddenly who are dead one episode and alive the next. Yes. Okay. I I yeah. Oh, okay, I can. I just felt it. These are, these, this is a myth energy inside you. So, what does the word myth mean to you? Myth, as it's almost a story. It's not. Uh -huh. It's not real, but it uh -huh. could be real if there's enough energy put into it. Uh -huh. um, there's almost fantasy. Uh huh. There you now you're beginning to get that anything that's behind it is amplified. Meaning, if you put any energy to it, you will amplify the myth, the story, or or the or the journey that it's on to be more part of your reality. And the more you give that story attention, the more it wins. Yes. Okay. And yeah. when something fades out of reality but has the threat to come back, it's because there's still charge and polarity inside you about the subject matter of what was done, which is why the healing journey for you is aligning the parts that want to work together until you've made a delineation of those that do and those that don't. And then one by one, you're going to begin expelling those that don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And those that are helping you have to work with you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just, well, I just find it interested. Would it? I've I've come across it just within my awareness of being living here in North Wales. Um, I've particularly seen quite a few around the Bedgellet area and Lamberis area, which are the mountain regions between Snowdon. Um, I just wanted tonight by me being here, I almost need to connect to that dragon energy for myself that could support. Um, why would you do it? I, I, I feel I'm asking that question just with how I've come on tonight. And also I was on YouTube and it was like every video just stopped working for me until I came across you as I didn't realize you was on tonight. And I thought, is that universal is that the dragon energy or a combination that that's, kind a, combi of that's a combination of all of that to bring you here okay okay i i think the greater the greater thing to understand here is this is a day of opening for you okay yeah new doors have been opened yes. and you got to let the fresh air from those new doors into your space okay yeah. look around your space make a backpack Clean yeah. up the area because you're going to be gone for a little while as you go on a new hike. Okay. In these new 
places and these new energies. Yeah. No, thank you. Okay, and you got to make sure nobody occupies the house while you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Did anybody else, uh, did you got anybody else want to want to ask Nathan anything? Because you affected a lot of people, man. A lot of people really learned a lot from that session I did with you. <laughs> Maddie, you want to talk about what it did? Um, so even though that you've been diagnosed with this particular disorder, Yes, I saw so many facets of it within myself, and I know yours is uh, trauma based as well. But the way that Andrew broke it down the eyes, the me's, the use, the them's and you could use an infinite amount of other descriptions, yeah. couldn't you, for different facets of the personality? And that's yep. what I got for me is, is it showed me that we all have a sense of that in a way, yes. we're all fractured in a way within our own minds. And it really brought me and made me aware of those different fractals of myself and how I could actually name and shame them, to, so to speak, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. Yes. And I thought it was very, very brave to do the work and not allow this to stop you in your tracks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I, that's what I really felt in myself that I needed to share it. And to show that there is hope as well, because I think a lot of people maybe get given them diagnosis and then they think that's it. If they just stick mm -hmm. to a medical system, which I'm not disputing it has points, but really majority of time it's very limited. And I was, that, I'm glad that I could just show someone that there is hope out there and there is a different way. Diagnosis and prognosis. You know, some people get told they're never going to walk again, yet, lo and behold, three years later, they're running around. They're running, yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, it's just, it, it's your own limitations, it really is, and how much work do you want to put into it? I'm not saying it's not going to be difficult, because in your particular case, it is going to be difficult, but it doesn't mean you can't do the great journey. You yeah. can't take those steps day by day by day, and, you know, what's to say what can happen in the future? Yes, yeah. yeah you've got the courage to do it Nathan as well and maybe have a victory fire because you've got so yeah. many victories interwoven in what you've achieved the courage that you've shown no thank you for that I'm not even I've never thought about doing a victory fire I like that no thank you and then once you've done your victory fire you'll have all the questions in your mind and the new the new well not battles but you know the new steps you're going to take towards newer goals Yes. Yeah. Greater goals, a greater awareness. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to so have Nathan, to get Nathan, off, guys, because I'm going to. Sorry. Go uh, on. One, one, more, one more quick question, Nathan, before we, because we got to end the show here in just of a course. minute. Of course. In your journey of discovering faith, yes. How is it that faith kept you on the narrow path of healing? And what were some of the challenges of faith you had? Um, it was the faith in myself that at times there was something that says, I can't do this to something very, very deep that I felt was my soul just going, I've got to keep going. And there's been many ups and downs with the I faith with the universe and my ancestors and my guides thinking, are you there? Are you not? But then having them moments of perfect synchronicity, sacred moments of just, okay, it is real. It's fine. I think it was them pointers that if I did drift off, there was always a mystical moment to bring me back. Beautiful. And, yeah. What were some of those mystical moments that got you back? If you must not share. Um, for me particularly, it's been, I've had some 
amazing moments of being up a mountain and just having that complete connection with the universe and being in that oneness. Um, that I've had them many times. I feel like that was partly why I had to move here in Wales to be close to a mountain region. Um, and then my other ones are just them subtle moments of just knowing your team's just there on your shoulder and actually just reminding you that they are there. And it's very, yeah, it's, that's, they're my two biggest ones that I come to forefront when you've asked that. Those are all beautiful experiences. Yeah. Yes. Reminders of how to keep on alignment yes. on that narrow path of healing. Nathan, thanks a lot for calling in and giving us an update. No, thank you very much. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks, good Nathan. luck, Nathan. Good evening. Yeah, good luck. Take care, bro. Bye-bye. Take care, bro. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we are at the end of the show. We remind everyone to go and like and subscribe. And uh, Lauren, what, is the, <laughs> what is the Two Feathers uh, Locals page? Is it Two Feathers at Locals.com? Two Feathers Medicine. At locals.com. Yeah. So if you're new to locals, go in, uh, get your account signed up and type in Two Feathers Medicine in the search and you'll, it'll come up straight away. You'll see a dream catcher in the logo. And it t- doesn't take long to sign up as well. I, I've oh, been testing. Easy. Yeah, really yeah. easy. It's really easy. Yeah, it is. And post your comments there or questions or whatever. Let's get interacting. Build the community because that's the whole point. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And all right, ladies, okay, guys, boys and girls and dragons of all ages. <laughs> Let's get ready to close the show. Thanks. Drop. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.